know, at the end of every year, we, we, we talk about New Year's resolutions or, or what God's going to do in the coming new year. But did you know that there is a way to have a good year? This is the first Sunday of 2021. It's very important that we kind of identify what's it going to take for God to open up the doors in our life. What's it going to take for God to do those things in our life that we know need to be done? I was reading in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Just one verse. But you know, Paul was talking about the different struggles of the church. He was talking about all the different things we go through. May I say, you've gone through some difficult times. Let's be honest. 2020 has been a challenging year. You've gone through some things that you never expect. As a matter of fact, when you started 2020, you never thought we were possibly going to have a pandemic. You never thought that you would be stretched beyond limits, that you would go through things, you would feel different things that you never thought were possible. But here you are today, as our sister said. You've come through it. You've, kind of, you've made it. We're now in the first week of 2021. And God hasn't forgot about the plans that he has for you. He hasn't forgot about those things that are hidden in your heart. God hasn't forgot about those things that you want to see done in your life. Maybe you felt like some things were put on hold. Maybe you felt like you failed. You, you didn't get there. You didn't live up to your own expectations besides others. And you're here today wondering, how are you going to get through this? How are you going to make it to the next place, the next spot that you believe you need to be? You see, may I say that God knows what he's doing in your life? He does. God knows the plans that, that he has for you. God knows those things that you desire. And he wants to help you to get there. Let me say this. There are some open doors for you this year. There are some things that, yes, may have been left on the table this past year. But listen, they can become reality this year. Some of you are looking for a relationship for God to renew. You're looking for God to bring something to you. Maybe some of you are looking for your job or a different vocation. Maybe you're looking for a change or, or something to happen that hasn't happened yet. You may be in that camp this morning, but may I say, it's possible for that to happen this year. But listen, as we read this verse in a moment, did you know there are some practical things that we can do to, to help us to be successful. It's possible, as a matter of fact, it's probable that you hold the cards in your hand. I know that's hard to, uh, to understand, but the fact is God's done everything for you. It's true. And did you know that it's possible that if you don't do your part, you're not going to find what God has for you. Let me read the scripture. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. I came up with three quick things. You know, I been doing that lately. Three quick things that I got out of the scripture. One verse this morning on how you can have a successful year. Once again, I truly believe that you hold the keys to a good year. What do you mean? What happens if we go through pandemic 2.0? Okay. What happens if something happens? As a matter of fact, every few years there's some crisis, worldly or if not nationally, but you go through things on a regular basis. You have challenges in your life. 
There's things in your life that, that, uh, that you don't understand what's going on. Maybe some things that are unraveling and it's hard for you to really put your thumb on it. I'm here to give you some quick thoughts on how you can have a successful year. Once again, I really truly believe you hold the cards pretty much. You see, God has done his part. And now he says, listen, if you will do, if you will follow me, I will give you the desires of your heart. The first thing that I see here, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Sometimes we don't want it to be about us. We want it to be about what God can do. That's okay. But did you know that in order for you to have a successful year, you got to win each day. Now that's tough. There's a new book uh, that uh, Mark Batterson just put out, Winning the Day. I suggest that you pick up a copy. He's a friend of ours. He's a pastor in, in D.C. of a large church. He's from the Chicagoland area. But he talks about winning the day. How are you going to win your day? How are you going to win your year? How are you going to find a successful year? What's it going to take? The first thing I see here is you got to keep throwing off those things that want to entangle you or want to hinder you. What are those things? There are things on a regular basis that are attracted to you. You see, you're living in the world that you're living in. We're all living in this world. Did you know that addictions want to stick to you? Did you know that some things in life, they're, they're, they're out there and they want to kind of bring you down? You see, God wants you to have a good week. But when you leave here, you're going to be faced with a phone call. You're going to be faced with a challenge. You're going to have someone that's trying to maybe bring you down. Maybe it's not intentional. But it's just, maybe it is. Maybe there will be someone that you run in the store that is rude or whatever it may be. But the choice is going to be yours. How high you uh, rise this year may be up to you. You see, if you choose to get down and to live a downcast life, it's possible you're not going to find all the things that God has for you. Maybe because you're not going to be looking or you're not going to be energized enough to, whatever it may be. Maybe if you walk in defeat this year, you're not going to find all the different things. Maybe if you're struck through an addiction, maybe you're not going to find what God has for you. Let me say this. What I see here, what Paul says, let us throw off everything that hinders. What is hindering your walk with the Lord? What is hindering your life this morning? You know what these things are. I know what mine is. I know what keeps me down. Now, i got to work on them this year. The things that hinder me, i got to get rid of. Paul was very clear. He didn't say, let them go. He says, throw them off. Take action. My brother, my sister, the things that are hindering you aren't worth keeping around. I don't care if it's a friend or a relationship. You know, sometimes if you're starting a new chapter, you got to delete those contacts on your phone. You got to block some people. You got to whatever it takes for you to become who God has called you to be. Did you know there's some people in your life that don't want you to win? I didn't, I didn't say your husband, your wife now. Come on. But did you know that there's some people that don't want you to, to get to the place that God... Here's what I want to say. The Bible is very clear. Let us throw off everything that hinders. Not some things. Those things that are hindering us, you got to get rid of. Listen, if you got a, if you got a temper, maybe this is the year for you to try to get rid of that. Maybe the temper has caused you to, to, to stay down. I remember once we were, Sue and I were in, 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 in Florida several years back. 
And Sue was driving, and um, she got pulled over. She didn't get pulled over for going fast. She got pulled over for going slow. And the police was uh, behind her, and I was in the passenger. I don't know why I was a passenger. I'm usually the, the, the one that drives. But the cop was there, and he, he was a little agitated. He was behind Sue, and, and uh, uh, he starts saying, why are you going so slow? And I started getting upset. I'm used to getting pulled over if we speed. So I, kind of, I didn't lose my temper, but let me just say this. We probably could have got out of this thing if I would have shut my mouth. But Sue ended up giving me a ticket. To this day, she blames me for that ticket. She got out of it later, but she had to go to school, you know, those online schools, pay the fine, which ultimately came out of my pocket. No, uh, afterwards, I'm thinking, if I just would have been quiet, I couldn't have avoided something. Possibly, not for sure. Here's what I want to say. What do I need to stay quiet about? What do I need to do that's hindering me in other areas? What about you? What are those things hindering you? Is it a personality flaw that you know has kept you from rising higher in the company? Maybe it's the way you carry yourself. I don't know. Maybe it's whatever. Can we work on these things this year? You see, many times God has done it all for you. He's given you your life. We find that is the race marked out for us. I truly believe God has given you your life. I really believe that there's a destiny for you. It's, it's been pegged out. God has a calling on your life. He, he wants to bring you to that place. But we are a partner in that. It's true. We are the ones that many times decide if we're going to get there or not. Well, we need to throw off everything that hinders. And I'm a second quick part and the sin that so easily entangles. We don't like to talk about sin. But let's be honest, sin destroys our life. Sin hurts us. Sin is an enemy of the cross, the Bible says. Sin is what it inhabits us many times. But we've been cleansed. We've been purified. We've been bought by the blood of Jesus. But sin has an ugly head. And it's always trying to regain control of your life. If you've ever struggled with addictions, you know what I'm talking about. If you've ever struggled with alcoholism or drug abuse, you know what I'm talking about. You could be free, but it's always there trying to overtake you. What is trying to overtake you that's trying to hurt you? The scripture says that we need to get rid of it. Here's what I want to say, and I'm going to move on. Practice this week to get rid of those things that are hurting you, that are holding you back. Whatever it is, maybe they're minor. Maybe it's, 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 it's not starting an argument. It's easy for me at different times with the kids to, to be um, critical very easy. You know what I need to do? It would be better for me to have a more peaceful house just to don't say anything at all. Don't, you know, okay, John Dave, you don't have to pick up your room. Just let it be trash. No, no, I didn't say we got to do that. But listen, maybe you could approach it a different way. Maybe I could go in there and help you clean up your room. Oh, forget that. Here's what I want to say, and I'm going to move on. What are the things that hold you back? Can we work on those? Can we throw them off? And the sin? Did you know that... Um, uh, just right around the corner there, I'm sorry if I'm going to ruin some of your, your, your thinking, there's a dispensary opening up. Someone came by and says, oh, there's a dispensary down the street. I thought of that. I used to be a pot smoker uh, years ago, a lot of years ago. Listen, listen to me. If you think because the government uh, okayed this that you can go around and have a successful life, you're lying to yourself. I'm telling you, you're lying to yourself. I do not care if the government illegalized. Listen, having a dispensary a block away would have been a dream come through for me if I was younger. But it also would have ruined my life even more. It would have, it would have, I possibly wouldn't have made it through, I didn't make it through high school, I didn't make it through college later. But listen, here's what I want to say. 
It would have kept me. Who would want to study when your mind is all whatever? Who would want to go to work when all you want to do is eat Cheetos all day? No, I'm drunk. Here's what I want to say. You got to be smart. You know what I thought of? If you're one of the smart ones, you're going to be ahead of the stoners. What I'm getting at, you can have a successful year. You could be one that rises because you have a clear mind. You could be one because you're free of the addictions. Let me tell you this. Addictions are killing us in this nation. Let's be honest. You, we got to work on that. If we can stay clean, have a clean heart, you're going to be successful. I'm telling you, if you just keep your heart clean this week, and that's a struggle, let's be honest, keeping a clean heart, David said this, create in me a clean heart. A clean heart will cause you to rise to the top. A clean heart will get you there. A clean heart will open doors for you. You, I bank this, you will have a successful life if you practice keeping a clean heart. Nothing will keep you down. No demon will hell will be able to ruin your life. Number two, let us run with perseverance. It's going to be tough this year. Let's be honest. You're going to find things. You got to run with perseverance. When you feel like giving up, don't. When you feel like, I don't want to go to church, say, no, I'm going. But the pastor's not going to be that good. I understand. We only got one. What are we going to do? Here's what I want to say. Well, we could listen to Joel every once in a while. Here's what I want to say. When you feel like giving up, go another step. When you feel like it's tough, persevere. Those that persevere this year are going to come out on top. Those that keep a clean heart will win the day. They will win. They will be successful. They'll be promoted. They will have a successful life because you can't keep a clean heart down. And we need to persevere. You're going to have challenges. We don't know what they are. Who would have thought last year? We would have these challenges. You're going to have challenges this year. But you got to somehow say, ah, no, come hell or high water, I'm going to live right. I'm going to do right. I may fall down. I may make some mistakes, but I'm going to get back up. I am setting my course this year. No matter what, I'm not going to give in to the government. I'm not going to give in to anyone. I'm going to live a good life. I'm not going to uh, be... Uh, settle for second best. I'm going to be settled for what God has for me. You know, I remember, um, I, I remember we used to run a program in Hawaii, Teen Challenge. But the, the, some of the kids would get a, a, a check for 400 and you know, a, a month. And you know what they would do? 400, they said, well, why should I... Uh, 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 Changed my life. This, and they settled for what they got. You know, I said, don't settle for 400, make 4,000 a month. No, make 40,000 a month. Listen, God has potential for you. Here's what I want to say be careful that you don't settle for less because it's hard or it's tough. Listen, those that God has great things for, they're going to have obstacles in front of them. But you got to live up to the challenge. You got to persevere. Number three, and then we're going to, the race marked out for us. And maybe this is my favorite thing, though I like the first point. But the race marked out for us. What is that? This is one verse here in Hebrews chapter 12. The race marked out. Once again, I really believe that here's your life. There's a stake here. There's a stake here. There's a stake here and a stake here. You need to stay in your lane. You got a calling on your life. God, from the beginning of time, he birthed, he's given you your DNA. He's put his spirit in you. He has something. As long as you have, have breath on this earth, he has something for you to do. Now listen, you can go this direction. You can go that direction. As a pastor, many times people think because I know people, I'm a public person, oh, maybe he could be involved in this. Maybe he could help us sell this. 
Maybe he can do this. Nothing wrong with those things. I understand that. It's business. I understand that. But you and I decided early on, which they taught us in, in Bible college, to stay in your lane. Don't go here. Don't go there. Because that's going to get you off track. Listen, you need to decide this year, what has God called you to? Did God call you over there? Did God call you over there? If you get a phone call, are you going to be altered in some way? Are you going to shift directions? I know someone could call me and says, hey, it's Saturday. Could you be in, in Michigan on Saturday? I just know for a fact, no. I know what my destiny, I know what I'm supposed to do. This is my job. So I would say, no. Can you stay in the lane that God has for you? If you can, you're going to win the day. If you can learn to be disciplined, if you can learn to, to understand your race that's marked out for us, listen, marked out for us, that tells me it's designed. You have a design. There is literally a template for your life. God has a template for your life. I know you're here and you're saying, I don't see it, I don't feel, I don't, I, where's it at? But listen, God has a template. You got to run your race. You, got, you can't get involved, you can't do these things. Listen, if you're into dating or single, you know what kind of person God has for you. If someone else, I'm not saying you can't be flexible a little bit, but you have to stay in your lane. Well, if someone calls here, are you going to get off track? You're going to say, no, I, I know what I want, and I'm going to stick to us. I didn't say you don't be flexible a little bit, but you hear what I'm saying? There is a race marked out for you. There is something that God has, and in order for you to get there, you have to Stay, you got to run your race. So, in closing, what does a successful year look like? We have a whole year in front of us. Every one of us here, we have a whole year right before us. You need a successful year. You need to win the days. Oh, there's going to be some days that you don't win. That's okay. There's going to be some where you're not the best. That's okay. But you need to decide right now what kind of person you're going to be. Are you going to be God-fearing? You see, God elevates those that are God-fearing. Are you going to be humble? Are you going to be contrite? Are you going to be quick to repent? If you're hard-hearted, if you have a heart of stone, it's possible you're not going to get there. It's possible you're going to be held back. I didn't say it's going to be all bad. But if you decide no, I've lived enough. I know my mistakes. I know my pitfalls. I'm going to learn from them. I'm going to be wiser this year. I'm setting the course this year, right now, today. I'm going to try to be good. I'm going to be noble. I'm going to try to be honest. I'm not going to try to cheat people. I'm not going to be belligerent. I'm going to try to live the life that God has called me. And... I know that addictions have hurt me. They've held me back. They wasted five years, 10 years of my life. I'm done with that. I'm going to try to stay on the straight and narrow. Oh, but the straight and narrow is, is, is not fun. Well, no, I kind of think doing, not doing God's will is not fun. They never, the devil never tells you the bad story. The devil always puts out the glamour. The, the glamour. You know what the glamour is? Serving Jesus. The glamour is doing what he tells you to do. I know they're trying to tell you now, this is the way to live. This is the way to go. On. And they're wrecking half of our young kids. And the world is trying to, trying to pull them away. Well, the Bible says this. Those that follow the Lord, they serve, they are on the road of a long, narrow road. Very few travel it. But those, now these aren't my words, don't get mad at me, but those that lead to hell, that lead to destruction, well, that's a short road. And it's very wide. And many travel it. Here's what I'm asking you to do. 
I'm asking you to take the long, narrow road of your life. And you'll be a winner because of it. It may not be popular. It may be lonely at times. Very few travel it. It may seem like you're not getting there. You're spinning your wheels. It may seem like there's not fulfillment. But I'm telling you, if you do it God's way, you will win your year. You will come at the end of December 31st, 2021. You've been through some things. You've been through some challenges. But you'll look back and say, God was with me. Let me tell you something. You follow the enemy's way and the enemy will take you out. The enemy will ruin your life. You follow the enemy's way, you won't have a life. Let me tell you something. The enemy is not playing games today. The enemy is looking to destroy what God is doing in your life. You need to be smart enough and say, I got it. I understand. I'm throwing off everything that hinders. I'm going to wake up. Something's trying to trap me. Something's trying to lead me away. Okay, they might have got me last night, but I'm getting up. I'm throwing off everything. I'm throwing off. I'm, I'm, I'm running. It's hard. It's hard to live a righteous life, but I'm going to run with perseverance. It's the right way to go. I'm going to stay in my lane. I know what I'm called. I know the person I am. I may not be perfect. I may not have it all together, but I know what God wants of me. And I'm going to do the best I can do to walk in the lane that he has for me. You do that, my brother, my sister. Three easy things. I guarantee you, you don't got to be the smartest cookie in the cookie jar. God will bless you. God will open doors for you. God will take you places that you never dreamed were possible. God does not fail. Listen, God's ways are the right, the right ways. God loves you. God has a plan for you. There's a good year ahead of you. I don't care what demon in hell is trying to ruin your life. The blood of Jesus is stronger. The blood of Jesus is mightier. The blood of Jesus at the end of the day will win the day. You are on the right course. Do not look back. Don't be like them looking back. Oh, I wish the world. I, uh, uh, I'm looking back. No, you know what God said? You know what happened? They turned into a pillar of salt. We're not looking back. We're, we're deciding that this is the way and walk ye in it. This is the way that God has called me to live. It may not be pretty at times. It may, may not be fancy, but I've set my course. As for me and my household, we shall serve the Lord. As for me and my household, they may make fun of me. They may laugh at me. But I'm telling you, God's ways are the right ways. You will come out on top in Jesus' name. Bless your people, we pray. Bless your people, we pray. Bless your people, we pray. Is there someone here? No one looking around. Is there someone here that would say, I need Jesus? If that's you, lift your hand, lift your hand, lift your hand. Lift your hand. If you need God, if you need Jesus, lift your hand. We're going to pray this prayer together. I'm going to pray it. Let's all pray it together. Dear Jesus, I love you. I'm sorry for my sin. Please forgive me. Come into my life. I make you my Lord and Savior. I accept you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, God, be with your people, please. No devil harasses God's people. It's the blood of Jesus that covers them. Satan, get under our feet. Help the families here. Help the kids. The families represented. Bless them. Bless their children. Bless their parents. God, bless their hands. The work, the labor. Bless them, we pray. 
These are your people. They love you. Those listening, they love you. Help them. Be with them. We desire your blessing this year. We desire what you have for us this year. In Jesus' name, let's stand together, can we? Lift your hands.